I'm Steve. Welcome to City Hall. This is a great place to spend a day looking at historical sites and having a great time with your family and friends. So we're going to take you on a little tour. Let's go. at our first destination, the Altar for the Heaven. This is an important historical monument built in the 1890s where the Emperor Kojon used to pay tribute to the heavens. This is the last remaining portion of what used to be a much larger historical complex, but since development, this is all that remains. Unfortunately, when we came here, the altar is currently under restoration. Hopefully when you come here, this will be complete. The Altar for the Heaven was constructed in 1897, at the time when King Kojong proclaimed the Great Han Empire. However, in 1913, the Japanese colonialists dismantled most of the complex. All that remains is the Yellow Palace Shrine, which was built in 1899. The Altar for the Heaven was symbolic of Korea's independence, and is built close to Doksogung Palace, which is where King Kojong resided at the time. now a museum, but when it was originally built, it was the first Western missionary school built in Korea. We are now entering into a typical classroom of Peje school that was revived in 1930. Peje means to grow the talent, and it was named by King Kojong, who also granted the school a hanging plate. It started with only two small rooms, but soon grew bigger with many students. We are going to transform ourselves into a typical student of that time. Andrew <laughs> So this is the uniform of a typical PG student. Fun thing to do. You can just try on the clothes and feel really in the moment in the history. During the colonial period, PJ School continued the education for Korean people and tried to keep the Korean identity despite of Japanese assimilation policies. Many missionaries who came to Korea at that time dedicated themselves to education. Here you can get a small glimpse at Lee Seung man the first Korean president, and Chu Si Kyung, a very important Korean linguist who both went to Peje school. And this is the hanging plate that King Ko Jong granted to Peje school. On these walls we can see all the notable alumni that attended the school. We are now on our way to the second floor exhibition hall where there are family relics of the Appen sellers and the noble family on display. Henry Gerhard Appen seller was the founder of Peje School. His son Henry Dodd Appen seller became principal of the school by succeeding his father. Korea's oldest performance piano is also exhibited. And this is the table and typewriter that Henry Dodge Appenzeller used. After all this walking around, it's time to reward ourselves with some good food. Let's go. 
Sung Myon Dong Hall was designed by a Russian architect in 1897. The protectorate treaty, also called Elsa Treaty, was signed here in 1905. After Emperor Kojong refused to sign the treaty, five Korean officials were forced to sign it by the Japanese. Today, it is a museum about the Elsa Treaty. before the Japanese colonization and it used to be called Gyeonggunggung but now the name is changed to Doksugung Palace and we will show you around and tell you a little bit about the history of each of the places that we can see in here. Doksugung Palace is one of the five grand palaces in Seoul. It was constructed many centuries ago and became a proper palace when King Seonjo resided there after all the other palaces were burnt down during the Imjin Wars of the 1590s. More recently, Emperor Gojon, one of the last Korean royals before Japanese colonization, resided there after he was forced to take refuge at the Russian legation in 1897. He continued to live there after his forced abdication under Japanese coercion in 1907 and until his death in 1919. Within Doksugung Palace is Junghua Hall. This hall is one of the historical centres of the palace, as it was the centre of politics during the period of the Great Han Empire and the backdrop to important political discussions of Emperor Gojon and other Korean leaders of the period. It served as the main throne hall of the palace complex and was used for ceremonial occasions such as coronations and receiving of foreign envoys. The canopy above the king's throne is decorated with a pair of dragons designed to be representative of Emperor Gojong's confidence and are similar in design to other murals and paintings in the palace complex. What we see here are the Emperor's sleeping and living quarters. When Kojong left the Russian legation and moved back to Gyeongungung in 1897, Hamnyongjeon was built as his sleeping quarters there. It was destroyed by a fire in 1904 but later rebuilt. Kojong died here in 1919 at the age of 68 and Hamnyongjeon served as his royal coffin hall and spirit hall housing his memorial tablet. This is Sokto Jeon Hall. It was designed and constructed by Europeans. It served as the sleeping quarter and audience hall of Emperor Kojong from 1910. After Kojong's death, the Japanese used it as an art museum. Then it had a lot of different functions. It is now under renovation, but hopefully by the time you go there, it will be accessible. arrived at our last important building of Doksugung Palace. It was the building for leisure. Different from the typical Korean traditional buildings like Jungwa Jeon Hall or the western style buildings like Sokjo Jeon Hall, this building is a mixture of both Korean and western style. The arch and the balcony are the components of the western architect, and the decorations in the building materials are traditional Korean. The balcony is decorated with oriental items such as bats, deer or pine trees which represent longevity or prosperity. It is said that the Emperor Kojong enjoyed to have coffee listening to music in this building. 